Okay, we'll go ahead and start with our secondary coach and uh, defensive pass game coordinator, Tavares Tillman. We'll open it right up for questions for Coach Tillman. Rod? Coach, how do you feel your, uh, I'm sorry. How, how do you feel your secondary is progressing with the communication, working together as, a, as one unit? Uh, I think they're doing a, a really good job so far. Um, there's always work to do, but um, I think we are, um, I think we're ahead of schedule. I think we're ahead of schedule where we are. But like I said, we, we still got some, some work to do, and I'm um, just trying to you know, piece that secondary together, so I'm, I'm still working on that. Just curious about your safety position. You know, Derek Allen and Jalen King have kind of been the main guys going into the season. How are you doing in terms of developing depth there? What are you seeing from those two and guys behind them? Um, those, guys, those guys are doing a great job. <clears throat> I mean, that you, you, might, you might see them first, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're first. So I'm, I'm still evaluating um, each position. There, there's, there's like no starters right now. So everybody's still on equal playing field, and we'll see how it ends up after this next scrimmage. Regarding the communication, um, when it's working, what is happening, and, and what are maybe some of the typical flaws or, or you know failures that, that lead to problems? Um, Pre-snap communication, I think, is good. When things start moving, um, there's some guys that can handle that and some guys that can't. So we're constantly working on that, you know, in the film room and then when we're doing like little walkthroughs. So we're, 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 we're constantly working on when, when, when those, those people start moving and, and we, we're having to make um, changes. So we're, we're working on trying to get that, all that stuff taken care of. Rod? You, you brought in a bunch of transfers to, to help build depth in that secondary. Uh, are there any names that you feel are, are starting to make, you know, stick out a little bit and maybe make a – you know, a determination that they should be playing. I mean, Kenny Kenny Ben has come in and been, and been a, um, a a welcome addition. I mean, he brings um, a type of um, physicality and a, a aggressiveness to the secondary that I like. Um, Amari Harvey is a, a kid that's coming on strong. I mean, he's 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 playing really good technique. I mean, he's he's doing all, all the right things. Um, Car G, he's 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 having a pretty good um, camp this this um, this this fall camp. I don't see anybody else uh, there. Um, KJ Wallace actually is having a really good good camp. So I'm I'm pleased with all those guys, and um, they, they're 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 going to continue to work, and hopefully they can help us during the season. Kelly, I was curious about Lamiles Brooks. You know, obviously he missed some time in the spring, um, and and hasn't really been probably as fully healthy as he would like to be since he's been here. What are you seeing from him, and kind of what's his role right now with the defense? He, I mean, he, he's playing he's playing one of the safety spots for us, and he's doing a really good job. I mean, I think he's still trying to get into. You know, back in the football shape, and uh, you know, after the injury, you know, just trying to get more um, secure with his body and all that. So, but he's doing a really good job, man. He's he's one of those guys in the room that you know that, that keeps it keeps some life in the room. He's he's a funny guy that you know keeps everybody up, and um, I really enjoy coaching that kid. Coach, Coach Tillman, uh, you played here obviously with a lot of success just a few short years ago, and one of the things about your career that stands out is that you played all three positions. Right. Are there some guys under your uh, Supervision right now that remind you of yourself in that regard. Do you have some people that are that versatile in the current group? Uh, I, I, I won't answer that right now, but uh, <laughs> but I, I do have some guys that can play multiple positions back there. Um, that's that's kind of what I look for in guys, even in recruiting, that guys that can play multiple multiple positions because you know you never know when you have to move guys around. You you don't want to have one guy you know pigeonholed in, into one position. So that's kind of what I look for, and we do have guys on the back end that can play multiple positions. If I can follow up what I was asking for about the communication, what I think I hear you saying is that some of the challenge is as much kind of the recognition as it is making sure that the you know the calls are, are broadcast throughout the. Correct, segment. correct. Just recognizing it and, and getting it to getting it from one side of the field to the other, right. getting it to the corners. You just, just got to be a little more vocal. But it, like I say, it's coming though. It's a work in progress. I mean, we still got some practices to go before we get to that game, and um, I'm confident we'll, we'll we can work at all those kinks. And imagine like the, the identification and the calling out. It starts with the with the safeties. Starts with the safeties. Starts. So I, you, I need a loud safety back there, smart safety, and um, we got guys that can, that can handle that challenge. Rob, you got to notice a couple of freshmen. Normally, when a freshman comes in, he you feel like it takes a while for them to get stronger and you get used to the physicality. But it looks like. You know, Marshall and Powell Lee are two guys, and maybe you're close to that. They, they are there? close, man. They're they're they're, they're impressive uh, freshmen. They they, especially um, uh, Clayton. He's he's come in. He's he. I call him the young vet because he's just so. He studies. He he he, he does everything right on the field. 
he's he's just he's beyond his years. The, the, the kid the kid is is, is, is going to be a really good player here, and I'm, I'm excited for him. And um, Jalen Marshall, he's he's big, tough guy who's going I think to help us as well. And um, not not to leave out Rodney Shelley, he's having a really good camp as well. But um, I'm, I'm really really happy with those guys. Can you talk a little bit about Caleb Edwards and that nickel spot? It seems like he's getting bigger and, and stronger, and also kind of developing depth there as well behind him. Um, he's doing. He's he's he came in the spring, um, did a really really good job, and he's I think he's continued doing a, a good job. Um, we got obviously we brought in KJ Wallace, brought in um, Kenny Bennett, who's as depth there as competition, and that's what we want in, in the secondary room. I want competition in every position. I think we have that, and I just think that's going to help us be a um, stronger secondary. Time for a couple more for Coach Tillman. What have you seen from Kenyatta? He's obviously healthier, and I think he's. Kenyatta, he's Kenyatta's a really, really good player. Um, can cover, cover um, like, like nobody else. Cover like nobody else. Really smart kid, um, willing tackler. Impressed with the kid. I think he's going to be one of those guys that are that's in the rotation, and, and that's going to help us win football games. Got a few more wrap us up. Yeah, we went through all this and we haven't talked about Zamari or, or Miles. Um, just kind of what are you seeing from those two guys, the corner position, two most experienced guys you right. have back? They, they've, been, they've been very consistent. That's, that's kind of what you want. you want. You want boring corners. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, want, you want everything just to be boring, redundant. Line up, next play. Line up, next play. Line up, next play. That, that's, and that's what they're, they're giving me right now. And I, I really appreciate them, you know, just the way they're, they're leading with their actions more than their words. But I, I appreciate the way, the way they've come out and worked this fall. All right. Coach Tillman, thank you. I appreciate thank it. You, Thanks, guys. Thank we'll go ahead and get started right away here with Caleb Edwards. Uh, any questions for Caleb? We'll start with Rod down here. Caleb, when you came here as a freshman, was the nickel position where you thought you'd start out? Or, you know, what were your thoughts coming in? Um, my thoughts coming in really and truly, I thought I was going to start out of free safety, but um, I'm a guy who just goes wherever it's needed, and they threw me in at nickel, and I've, I've taken to the spot. Um, I truly appreciate Collins giving me the opportunity just to you know try it out, and since trying it out, I think it's been good for me. So, yeah. Go ahead, Kelly. You know, looking at the, the secondary, how would, you, how would you say you guys are progressing right now maybe versus where you were a year ago? Um, honestly, I'll say we're a lot tighter as a group. I think it's more of a family bond with us now. It makes it, it makes things on the field a whole lot better. Makes communication a whole lot easier. Um, I think bringing in Tillman, Tillman is uh, he's also made that family dynamic with us, and that that makes us a lot more uh, dangerous in the secondary. So, if I can follow up on that, like how did that happen? That that be you guys became closer as a group. Uh, really and truly, I mean, I think we just all just realized like we got to have fun in doing this. So we started going out to dinner. Um, Coach Till, he took us out one time for brunch. Um, we were just, just going out, having fun. Us guys were hanging out in the summer all summer, doing extra work, doing this and doing that. I think we just ended up growing together and just realizing that we're all out here competing for jobs and competing for spots. But at the same time, we're competing for a common goal. So and That's something that didn't happen as much last year, you'd say? i say it happened a lot last year also, but I just think we didn't come together as quick as we needed to. Um, I think coming together in the summer, Truly, uh, instead of trying to work on it in the season, is has made a difference. You're, you're playing under a new coach this year, and the entire unit mm -hmm. is playing under one coach. How has that been, and, and how would you describe Coach Tillman's uh, coaching style? Coach Tillman's coaching style, he's like a he's like a father to us, honestly. He um he gets us what we need. He makes sure we're going. He, actually, he tells us we're going to excel. We got no other option, and I really appreciate him telling us that because I think. Given that option of you know maybe we might have setbacks, we might have fear, that can't happen. Especially with us now and what we're trying to do, we need to be able to know that we're strong mentally and we're strong physically, and we need to get the job done. So his his um his dynamic of coaching has really been good for us, and I think it's gonna make us better this season. Kelly, has it been different having him? He's a guy who's literally walked in your same shoes and played at the highest level mm -hmm. at the position you guys all play. Like, does that change maybe the messaging from him or? How, how you guys view him a little bit? Yeah, so we we do get after him a lot. We always want to see his highlights and see what he did here, <laughs> which is kind of, was kind of funny. But um, just knowing, like, I take man as for himself, knowing that he is the person we're all trying to be and we're trying to get to the goals he, he's also um, achieved. So I think he pushes us to do that as well. And that, that makes all the difference in the coach, you know, um, with him trying to make, uh, get us there to that point. 
and that's going to make us better right there. So. And then Cam and then over to Patrick. Have, have you seen his highlights, and, and what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> no, he, he, he tried not to show us. He, he showed us one picture yesterday of him trying to show his vertical in the team meeting. I mean, we <laughs> It wasn't that high, just saying. <laughs> that was a follow-up. Is it was that a picture of his vertical or did he demonstrate his vertical live? No, nah, it was just a picture. He he wouldn't dare do that. He might he might pull something if he did that. <laughs> Caleb, I was gonna ask, it's still very early, but obviously the D line's performance has a lot to do with your guys' success. Yes, sir. What do you see from those guys so far this summer? Man, the D line, that's where it starts, honestly. If those guys aren't right, we're not gonna be good on the back end or you know, the linebackers too. Um, those guys have been amazing this summer. I mean, I've seen them work day in and day out. Um, I can just name some guys, you know, Zeke, uh, Duce, we call him Dallas, um, just Keon. Though, I mean, those guys have been working their tails off, and, you know, we really got – I'm really behind them myself, and I think the whole secondary linebacker core is behind them too. So I think with the success they're going to have this year, there's no doubt we're going to have success. So. Time for a couple more to Rod and then Kelly. Uh, is, is turnovers a subject you guys talk about, or, or, or does Coach Tillman talk about it, or does he just expect you to go out there and make plays? Uh, he expects us to go out there and make plays, but turnovers are our main emphasis. Um, Coach Stack also talks about turnovers a lot, and we do circuits, you know, takeaway circuits, and making sure we're getting the ball out, we're making sure we're trying to get interceptions, trying to work on tackling so we can hit the strike zone, you know, and stay safe while we're doing that type of stuff. But turnovers are a big emphasis. We need turnovers this year. I don't think we had enough last year. And I think creating more this year will allow us to win more games this year. So, just curious about one aspect of your your game that may, maybe we'll see more of this year mm -hmm. in terms of pass rushing and, and blitzing and that kind of thing. Being more aggressive is that something you like doing as a defensive back? Is that is that something that you're hoping is a bigger part of the game? Yes, plan sir. This year? So I I think of myself as a more aggressive DV. I do like to get in, you know, a pass rush. I like to come off the edge, um, make tackles, um, but. Being, being aggressive in, in those scenarios, that is definitely it's going to be a big part of my game this year. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll get to see the full extent of it this year. So. All right. Caleb, thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right. Everybody good? Okay, next uh, we've got Kenan Johnson. We'll go ahead and open it right up for questions for Kenan. So let's start us off. Caleb, go ahead. Obviously, you've had kind of a different role every year. Are you playing more corner now versus kind of moving around like you did in the past, or is, is there still going to see you in different roles during the season? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, you know, I feel like Coach, Coach Tillman feel like my primary focus would be more of the corner. You know, he said he liked me uh, outside, but, you know, I still can have a role inside at nickel whenever he need me. You know, he said that option still could be uh, open as well. Rod? You've had some, some moments in your career so far where you've been dinged up, you know, you've been making progress and then you, if something comes along, do you, do you feel confident now that you're in a place where you're going to have a, you know, a healthy season and ready to make a contribution? Uh, yes, sir. You know, I've been very consistent with just with the trainers in the training room, you know, trying to stay ahead of the injuries. Um, you know, I feel 100 percent right now, the best I've felt since I've been here. So, you know, I feel like I'll be able to help contribute to the, to the defense this year. Okay. Um, one emphasis I think you guys have had is, is communicating better in the secondary. I'm curious, can you think of an example like something that, that maybe might have gone wrong last year that you feel like you've been able to clean up, you know, something that, that, that compromised communication, make, making sure we're on the same page that now you're yeah. doing better? Yeah. Uh, so last year, you know, we had two position coaches, one for the corners and one for the safeties. And, you know, just uh, having us together now with one, one, one uh, DB coach in the, in the meetings has definitely helped us stay on one page, you know, because we all know the adjustments together. And uh, we just practice help communicating uh, just in general. That, that's one thing that, you know, I feel like we kind of lack just with that being, with, with the rooms being separated, I don't feel like we would uh, always be on one accord. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just been a lot better that we're now meshing together in uh, one room. It seems like you guys are a little more locked in. There's guys are pretty focused and, and Kind of focused on the goals and trying to work, and not maybe as caught up in, in moments or celebrating things like that. Yeah. Is that something that you're noticing yourself? Is that accurate? That guys are kind of locked in on the process. Uh, yes, sir. You know, we've been, you know, we've been preach next play mentality. You know, we know what's up. We know what we got to do. At the same time, uh, you know, we're not worried about the little things. The only thing we worry about is trying to get better each play. What's our technique? You know, what what do we have? You know, is just the next play mentality. 
after spring practices were over, did Coach Tillman give you any any things that he wanted you to work on maybe in the uh, in the summer in the workouts? Um, for me specifically, you know, he just I feel like you know this is always the little things as far as like just technique, you know, making sure your eyes where they need to be, and just you know the basics as far as uh, just staying polished as a DB. Is there a, a, a younger wide receiver you feel like is going to be a breakout guy that you've seen in one on ones that you, you, um, you should be all uh, watching out for? A younger guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say you know I like I like Malik Rutherford. You know I feel like he has he's he's very electric. Um, you know he does a lot of good things as far as uh, know, knowing how to uh, get open. You know I feel like he definitely knows how to get open. Yeah, that's that's the guy I would say. It's kind of caught my eye. Ken, just a question about the process. When you guys break the huddle and your alignment is set at that very moment, but if you need to change based on what the offense presents you, does one of your group make that call? Does one certain member of the secondary make that call to change the alignment? Oh, yes, sir. So normally we, you know, we let the nickels and the uh, safeties kind of dictate what, what uh, you know, rules and uh, different things that we're going to play once we break and see the formation. So it definitely would be more on. We try to let the safeties talk more. Or less in the corners. You know, uh, watching EJ and, and even Ryan and some of the bigger receivers, what has that been like to, to get to go against guys like that in practice? And, and what's EJ like going against, too? Because I imagine you probably yeah. haven't had a lot of experiences like that. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's definitely different, you know, seeing a guy EJ size line up outside. You know, it, it kind of keeps you on your heels, letting you know that you can't really necessarily make a mistake just because, you know, you don't want to be in any negative position against someone like that. You got to always make sure you're on top and just you have to be physical, obviously, just because of uh, how big he is. So, you know, it's been a good challenge, though. It's been exciting. And I think he's definitely uh, helped the team and he's helping the DBs, you know, get better. Everybody else? All right. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Last but certainly not least, we have Derek Allen. Obviously, it's been a long road. Like since you got here, obviously you had the injury the first year, and then you've been working your way through the rotation. What has it been like to kind of be the, the hunted now versus the hunter? Um, definitely been a long journey. I remember coming up, being fall camp, complaining about reps, complaining about wanting to go, go, go. And now that I'm finally up here, I, I remember that feeling of like someone's trying to get up here, someone's trying to. So I want to take all my reps. I try to give 100%. Try to like be a good leader, I guess. So. You, you have a, a bunch of um, transfer DBs that came in this year that are going through the same journey you went through. Uh, what advice did, did you give to them, if any, on, on you know what things are like here? Uh, well, the funniest thing is KJ, I've known him my whole life since I was like seven, eight years old. So it's just kind of like it's been the same process. Just kind of keep to it. Just kind of keep your head down, just work, and everything's just going to play out. And just make sure you're like in a spot that like we're all family, we're all comfortable and close. like. If you can open up to me, I can open up to you. Curious, um, what was your process of getting a, a single-digit number, and, and why why number four? Um, I just felt like it was time for a change-up. My process, I wrote a letter to Coach Collins, just explained like just my journey, leadership, how like I wanted to take on that role, and I felt like it was a good transition for like a new number, being a new person. Spoke about it with my dad, and he agreed that he liked four. I would have preferred seven just because that was family number, but I'm, I'm ready for four just because it's a new environment, new change up. Looking at you know the secondary, you guys obviously didn't play the way you, the way you wanted the last few years. Um, how different do you feel like the group is right now? What are the things that maybe you guys are doing better now in, in camp and can carry over into the season? Um, it's definitely first things first to be communication wise. We make sure everyone's on the same page when it comes to anything. And secondly, it's just player accountability. Like we're not afraid to hold each other accountable. Nobody's on a different pedestal than anyone else. Like you can get the same amount of just coaching, same amount of just talk that anyone else would get. Doesn't matter who you are. You and Jalen are the guys that are in the forefront right now. Are, are what what are you seeing from the guys that are behind you that are trying to challenge a little bit. 
just the thrill of competition. It's just like everyone wants to, we all want to be big dog. We all want that one spot. And it's just that every day in practice, pushing, pushing, because you don't want to mess up. Because you know, if you come out, someone else is going to go out there and they might make the play. Then that's going to, everybody's just got to be on top of the game. Yeah. Uh, Derek, if you could help us, well, help me understand, like just the, the communication issues, like, and, and for instance, Kenan was talking about how because you guys are in different rooms, you know, the, mm. the adjustments were harder to make. Like, what's a problem that what, that have resulted from you guys being in different rooms? Um, so communication-wise can mess up with, um, if, say, we make a sky right call, but the corner interprets that sky right call as an under, it can mess up whether the corner's press or if he's off coverage, and that can really throw off the whole thing. So that's why we really try to meet before practices and before games and, like, make sure all our calls, like our buzzes, skies, they understand, like, when to come off, when to stay on, and rotation-wise, like, just the different, like, strengths. Derek, you mentioned a minute ago about holding each other accountable, and I don't want you to name any names, but tell us what form that might take. Is that putting on your arm around a guy or, or it, hollering at a guy? Honestly, or it guy? depends on the person because everyone takes, like, I don't know how to, how to word it. Everyone takes – discipline I guess differently and you can't just get in someone's face one way yell at them whatnot you gotta know how to approach someone so like that's where like that connection we have we've all been around each other so long like we've all had those like Madden arguments we've all had those so like we know how to speak to each like each person speaks to a different person so like some people like yeah you can pat them on the side but some people you got to get on them and it's just they know how to take it they know how to receive it and give it back anything else for Derek so what do you remember about KJ from when you guys were, were kids? Say it again. Like when you guys were kids, like you and KJ, what, what kind of stuff did you guys um, do? What do you remember? I distinctly remember when we were 11 years old, we went and watched The Conjuring. And I hate scary movies. And it was like 3 o'clock. And he thought it was so funny to go to the basement and just start knocking on the door at 3 in the morning. And it, I think I was traumatized for like two weeks. Like I wouldn't <laughs> sleep with the lights off. Like I hated that. I'll never forget that. Awesome. Well, we'll wrap up with that story. <laughs>